truth, embellishment or lie. One of the important things to understand about my kind and me is everything, and I mean everything, is all about us. You may think that there are times when we are behaving in a kind and generous manner. We may appear interested in what you are saying or what somebody else is talking about. We may demonstrate an understanding of somebody and appear to go out of our way to assist. None of this happens unless there is something in it for us. At its most obvious, this trait of making everything about us manifests in us talking a lot about ourselves. We will regale you with our achievements, our sporting prowess, the things we succeeded in when we were younger. We will boast about how much we earn, where we holiday, where we, desire, where we dine, what we buy and so on, just to make sure that the listener, and especially you, understand that we are fantastic. We are leaders in our field. Some of what we boast about is made up. This is because we are adept at listening to other people when we meet them and stealing parts of their characters, attributes and behaviours that we covered for ourselves. We absorb what they are and turn it into being part of us so that the rest of the world thinks this is what we actually are. This makes us more attractive and enables us to draw other people to us. Much of what we brag about is embellished and exaggerated, but there is a foundation of truth. We have been to Dubai twice, but we make it eight times in a conversation. We once attended a Depeche Mode concert and made it to the front of the crowd. We tell you we had drinks backstage with the band, although Dave Garn, the lead singer, was drinking water because he stays sober these days. We own an Armani suit. We tell you we have seven, one for each working day and two for Saturday, dependent on where we go out. We are often intelligent and therefore it is not difficult for us to seize on information that has been provided by someone else and claim it as something we have done or seen. A friend has attended an art exhibition and told us a lot about it. Ordinarily, we would much rather be talking about what we have been doing but we recognise the value in listening, at least for a period of time. First of all, the fact that someone as brilliant as me is deigning to listen to you shows that you must at least have some special qualities for that to happen. This will make you feel good about yourself. You are not only being granted an audience in the presence of greatness, but how about this? I am actually allowing you to use up my precious time and tell me something about you. Secondly, I listen because I recognise that this information you are telling me has a value. I can purloin it for myself, and at a drinks reception that evening, I can also claim to have attended the art, art exhibition. My air of confidence and total conviction in what I am saying will not cause someone to doubt what I am saying is true or not. Why would they? Most people accept comments at face value anyway. Why would they seek to cross-examine me about whether I went or not? I know this is how people respond, and therefore there is no difficulty in me pretending that I attended. Indeed, I will regurgitate this outright lie about attendance so many times that I may as well have attended because I am able to recall sufficient detail. Even better, those who I have mentioned it to have also attended, and their enthusiastic responses to my clearly educated and erudite comments about the installations that were on show has garnered me fuel but has also provided me with further information from those people which I can then pass off as my own. The more information I gather, the more I can talk about how brilliant I am. I can show off and have those around me marvel at my humorous observations, my pithy comments, my extensive knowledge about a wide variety of topics, and I am able to demonstrate I am a polymath. I will talk about all the places I have visited around this world, although I may well have visited less than half. I can tell you about certain prestigious sporting events I have been to, who I met there, and wow you with the famous people that I know. I am entitled to do this because I am built from excellence to begin with. I am successful. I am talented. I want the world to recognise these talents. They must do so. And they must stand and appear and applaud and cheer how brilliant I am. There is nothing wrong in that. 
I have to have it happen so I can secure the fuel that I need. This means that I must always find a stage for my achievements. You may think of it as little consequence, but to me it matters and it must be heralded. In addition to this, I add to my triumphs. I embellish and exaggerate because that is where I ought to be were it not for those who have plotted and conspired against me to try to hold me back. You see him on television. I was earmarked for that role, but I was unwell and they would not wait. Accordingly, I see no reason why I should not explain how I have secured other prestigious roles in the world of entertainment. It does not matter that I am lying, because in my mind I am entitled to be the person who is number one, who wins the awards, who is voted most popular, because I am me. I am brilliant. I know from when I have explained this to those who are tasked with treating me, that they have asked me whether other people would think that such a stance would be regarded as normal and acceptable. I played along and asked the good doctor what she thought, and she commented that while she understood why I did this, most people would find it incredible that I would do this. Yet, once again, intelligent as she may be, she is missing the point. I do not tell people that I embellish and lie because I am the master of conviction and plausibility. I am intelligent, therefore, is it that difficult to imagine that I scored a double first? I did, but you understand the point I am making. I look after myself. So it is entirely conceivable that I won sports awards when I was younger, and that I was on the books of a premiership football team, but I chose a different football, different career path. I work hard. I work hard to achieve, and I always have done so. I have also been driven to do so, and because of this bedrock, this foundation of achievement, Anything that I add on top of it is entirely plausible and ultimately something I could achieve if I wanted to. Therefore, there is nothing untoward in me adding those exaggerations and falsifying certain parts. I share this with you to help you understand my standpoint. I know much of what I say is exaggeration in my private life. I know some of what I say is false when considered through the strict lens of your comprehension of the world. But we are not talking about you, are we? We're talking about me. You label such things as embellishment, exaggeration and falsification. But those are your words. They are not mine. From my point of view, I would consider them as a positive gloss, adding in what I would have attained and what I would have done were it not for others, so I may as well claim it as my own. I have explained these principles at length to the good doctors, and I know they understand my point. It is all a question of perspective. You call it a lie. I call it capturing an altern alternate me and adding it to the real me. You call it embellishment, and I call it supplementing. I understand from what the good doctors have said that people struggle with this concept, but I did point out that most of the time you have no idea whether what we are telling you is the truth, using your word, and therefore it does not matter. You are in awe of us, and that is all that matters. You provide us with the appropriate reaction, our fuel, and you become attracted to us, whether as friend, colleague, or intimate partner. That's the truth of the matter. No exaggeration.